So what have we got for you today? Well, the mirror has splashed on a poll showing that 74% of the public back tougher penalties for the owners of dangerous, out-of-control dogs. More on that a bit later. But first, I want to go to page two, because the biggest story of the day elsewhere is going to be that the first 50 migrants are apparently due to board the Bibby Stockholm barge in Dorset in what might just be the most expensive PR stunt since a Downing Street advisor went all the way to Barnard Castle when he should have gone to Specsavers. Now, Kevin, take us through this. What's what's happening and why do we think it's today? Yeah, it's a bash a migrant week in the government's summer agenda to try and make it appear to, to be doing something. And after weeks of delays, the Bibby Stockholm uh, with Portland in, in the fifth and you move in the media has been tipped off this is the case that's not to say the, the buses mightn't turn up to collect them from hotels or there might be another hiccup but it's uh, happened today the government's having a big push on on this because every policy has uh, effectively failed uh, Rwanda now is plan B 140 million quid wasted on that so Ella Braverman Home Secretary said she couldn't wait she was dreaming of people on flights well now the government is looking at other places, five countries in Africa have been looked at, including Niger, which is a little coup, of course. Uh, and, uh, Great time to send people there. Yeah, what marvellous, really. middle of a coup, military dictatorship. Yes, why don't we just send some uh, yeah, traumatised people into it? Look, Foxy, you, you know, and you put your finger on it, it's really about PR, all of this. They want to appear to be tough and as if they're acting. And they're just flash, uh, thrashing around, flailing around. That's why Ascension Island, 4,000 miles away, 1,000 miles off the coast of Africa, is now being s- suggested. I mean, these are crazy times, but the Bibby Stockholm is a reality. Um, it won't save a huge amount of money. One uh, charity suggested it might be 10 quid a night saved compared to what would happen if uh, people went into ho- hotels. Uh, the locals, including Tory MPs, don't want it there. Uh, they doubled the capacity, put bunks in, so rooms that were designed to hold one person now will hold two. The fire brigade union and firefighters raised concerns about um, potential blazes on it because some of the people on it will be troubled and will not want to be there. And so often fire is, is used as a, as a way of uh, protesting. You see that in prisons, or the prisons are better at dealing with it. So it's a uh, it's it's a hell of a mess, but yeah, the government wants the TV cameras there, and people uh, are seen if they do go along the uh, you know the, the gangway onto that boat, so we can say it's making, making progress because it's just utterly failed. It hasn't stopped the boats, and net migration is at a record six hundred thousand, which is way ahead of anything that ever happened during Britain's membership of the European Union. And Brexit was sold in in large part to people as a way of taking back control of cut migration. And it hasn't happened. No. And it's you know it's worth pointing out that that 600,000 migration figure is the legal migration. Yeah. Right? That's, that's not the asylum seekers. There's about 161,000 asylum seekers in the country last year. So it, it doesn't touch the sides. Now, and that Ascension Island thing, by the way, correct me if I'm wrong, viewers, viewer, if you're there, but um, <laughs> I suspect... I, th- I think I can recall Pretty Patel suggesting Ascension Island a couple of years ago, back in about 2020, and being told that it was expensive and stupid and bad, and she couldn't, and she went, oh, and I had to throw the idea out. But yet it's coming back again. It's like a zombie policy. Yeah, well, in some ways it's a zombie government. Uh, all they do is uh, uh, moan uh, as if they've never been in power, and uh, infamy, infamy, everybody's got it in for me. Uh, it's uh, you carry on failing mm. uh, they uh, no, they, they're just dusting down i suppose we'll have wave machines in the channel next or then uh, the royal navy somehow pushing small dinghies back you know all those daft things that were yeah. floated and then and then rejected yeah. but, uh, but but labor have said they would you know they, they say well we'll inherit a mess so they would keep the bibby stockholm or other other uh, barges and the military uh, camps that are being converted. Um, because, of course, you know, the, the only real answer is, one, you stop the channel crossings. Two, if people come across and have no right to claim, or the majority do when they get here, then you have somewhere to return them if you have a, a, a agreement. And three, you have to process people quickly. Mm-hmm. One of the big problems is the, the whole system is 
incredibly just clogged up because the government didn't get a grip early on. It didn't respond very quickly. Uh, no. it's, uh, it's, all, it's, all, it's all about P PR and politics now rather than really addressing the main problem. Yeah, but what do you think, everybody? Are you happy that the Bibby Stockholm is going to start being um, filled up today, or would you rather that it was, uh, you know, the state empty and went back to wherever it came from? Mike says good morning. Yes, that, welcome back, and to you, Mike. Um, at least Mike's here. Um, now, the thing is that the the as they've Kevin's been saying, there's been delays in getting this barge up and running, and when it's full, it could house uh, 500 male solo migrants. But that is just 0.3% of the 161,000 asylum seekers we've actually got. It's nothing. But it's about bringing the price down. And there's running costs of about 20,000 a day for this barge. So it will cost 40 quid a day per migrant. But as Kevin says, that might might be only a saving of 10 quid on some of the rooms they're in. Some of them are supposed to be in like 100, 200 pound a night hotels, but they're obviously getting a cheap deal as well. They will throw on the security costs of actually patrolling around that ship and the staffing costs of people that are on there, because you've got to have doctors, and you've got to have psychiatrists, and you've got to have home office and border force people, then the costs just get there far higher than having hotels. Um, but, of course, they don't get room service included in the hotels. In fact, some hotel owners do get to clean up and take more profits than for rooms that um, you or I wouldn't sleep in. But, Kevin, overall, the government would need 322 barges to house all the asylum seekers. Now, it does say today that it's in talks with other ports, but it's never going to be able to provide 300 barges, is it? No, and what you find is that uh, Tory MPs who say, look, something must be done the moment a barge is uh, proposed near them or a disused military base is uh, proposed for conversion, they then kick off. Uh, and I suppose no one really would want one of these barges Mood to them, it's a mood near them. It's not just uh, Tory MPs because you you know it's just creating a, a problem. When you put that number of people in one place, you're going to get some local resentment, unfortunately. Mm. Um, and so it's it's just not it's just not the it's just not the long term answer. But the government doesn't seem to have a long term answer because of course it put all its eggs in a Rwanda basket, which was meant to be a deterrent because it could only take a few hundred people anyway in Rwanda. But they managed to to sell it. Uh, to to excite uh, uh, knuckle scraping bigots is is really what it's all about. To try and get them to vote Tory at the at the election. This is what it is all about. And you hear somebody like Robert Jenrick, the immigration minister, Suella Bravham, and the Home Secretary, and they sound as if they've you know, they've just landed in their jobs day one. They don't accept all the mistakes they've made over many many years, and they will attack Labour. That's fair enough. That's part of politics. But they never like to really discuss in detail their policy because they they have failed and they have failed miserably on their own terms. Yeah. What do you think, everybody? Do you think the Tories are onto a winner here as far as the voters are concerned, or do you think that you know this is going to bite them on the bum in the long run? Mike says, if and when <clears throat> there is a tragedy on the refugee prison ship, ministers will deny any responsibility for any harm, and the rabid right wing MPs in the party will say it shows refugees shouldn't come here. I don't doubt, Mike, that at some point some might say it's uh, some kind of Labour lawyer as well who is responsible for you know setting a fire or something like that. Now the question is. What would Labour do that's any different? Like you said, Kevin, Stephen Kinnock, the shadow immigration minister, has said that on day one, if this is the existing infrastructure they inherit, they're going to have to deal with it. And they will keep sending people to the barges or Rwanda mm -hmm. or whatever is working at that particular time or not working, the case may be. But if Suella Braverman wants to present and Robert Jones want to present like this, this theatre of cruelty to the voters ahead of a general mm -hmm. election in order to sort of appeal to some Tory voters... Is Labour not going to put off all the other Tory voters who don't like this policy, and there's quite a few of them, and an awful lot of their own voters as well, by not saying it's got a better solution than these, basically a prison hulk? Yeah, well, Labour's uh, present itself as we'd be more competent in that they'd set up a special police force to take on the traffickers running the, running the boats across the channel. They also say because they're more outwardly looking, they could do the deals to return people to countries if they found not to have a, a valid reason um, to stay in Britain. But they haven't actually formally said they would tear up Rwanda, although I think that, uh, that is likely, although you may not have to tear it up because the Court of Appeal has ruled it's, uh, 
it's unlawful and that policy will presumably go to the Supreme Court. And if that rules it's unlawful, well, the government will just waste 140 million quid. Uh, but they'll, they'll blame everybody else, of course. But you know, the illegal immigration bill going through um, uh, Parliament, or it's just gone through Parliament, you can't even say that is legal either. So there'll be legal challenges. But you're right, Labour don't have a, a magic wand. And the truth is, all politicians should just say, look, this is this is a very difficult problem. There's huge movements of people around the world. Some some are refugees fleeing terror. Others are economic migrants fleeing um, star, uh, starvation, drought, and extreme hardship. Only a very, very, very small number come to Britain. It's incredibly small. Mm. And, and I think that, that those boats will never be stopped because even if a legal route into the UK was devised for people who, once they get here, and the majority, once they get here, are found to have valid reasons, international law or own law, to be here, the others would presumably still try. So those boats would still be, be coming. But I think politicians have to, have to be honest and say, look, you know, we've got to do our bit around the world. And people, when they get, get here, they're allowed to stay. They work. They pay tax. Uh, they, they become teachers. They run businesses. Uh, some of them become <laughs> sports stars, brain surgeons. You know, that's, that, you know, that's, that's what happens. Working, though, is the, the <laughs> attitude that Labour had under Blair and Brown, which was that we have to deal, because there was this section of society they wanted to appease, David Blunkett, as Home Secretary, stopped asylum seekers working, stopped them paying yeah, taxes, put them into race, started yeah. forcing them out and became, put them, made them a cost on the public purse rather than a gain, and that caused yeah. half the problems we've got now. Yeah, a, a, million, a million or so vacancies in the economy, jobs that are there to be done but are undone because there aren't the people to do it. And at the same time, we're, we're enforcing idleness on people who, who want to you know, pull their weight, pay their way. It's a, mm. it's, it's, a, it's a mad, it's a mad bar. And I think we have to have that decision. And you've got to, you've got to start that. Actually, migrants are good for Britain. Asylum seekers have been good for Britain. Uh, and of course, you need to police your borders. Every state does. But got to change the conversation so uh, uh, it's get away from that Suella Braverman invasion rhetoric which was uh, clearly calculated to dig her out of a out of a hole um, and she wanted a diversion not least from uh, the mistake she she'd made uh, it kind of worked for her in one way but it is really it's really poisonous toxic politics yeah, it's not very nice, is it? As we got, David Cameron was heavily criticised for saying exactly that kind of thing, what, a decade ago? And they still they still mm. sort of double down on it. Now, we need to move on to the main story of the day. Peter says, why is it all men, not women and children? I'll tell you why, Peter. It is women and children. A third of them are women and children, right? A good chunk of them are whole families that come over. And if you are a young man in somewhere like Sudan, where you get conscripted into the military at about 15 and you are never allowed to leave the military, and when you're in the military, you have to kill and murder and rape and you get treated terribly badly, you leg it, mate, rather than get conscripted into that. And your family will all bunch together and pay people traffickers to get the young man who's at most risk in that situation out of the country. That's why. Because if you were you, Peter, in, in this country, you look like a man in your middle years from your profile picture. If you had a son who was 18 about to be conscripted into very definite abuse and murder or unpleasantness for life where he would get stuck there, you would pay to get him out of the country. That's why it's often men go first because they don't want to send the women and children first because it's difficult to get there, wherever it is you're going. And most people don't come to the UK, as Kevin said, despite the fact um, that we have a reputation for tolerance and, uh, and better weather. Climate change as well is one of the things which is causing failed states all around the world, They're causing wars, causing religious fundamentalism, causing economic collapse, causing uh, starvation and famines, as Kevin said. And they want to come to countries where they don't have such severe climate change. What we've got in this country is some floods and some hot summers, right? So people would rather be here than there. And they're not all, all piling up here. So just doing our bit, seeing as we cause some of that climate change would probably not be too bad, would it? I think we'd cope. 